Welcome to I'm Spiritual Damn It. I'm your host, Jennifer Weigel. And joining me in studio, here we are, Tim Tangbled, who's back by popular demand because, Tim, as your years, was it 29 years as a pastor? Lutheran pastor? 35. 35. Okay, sorry. 35 years. You know a few things. Just a few. A couple. Just a couple. And as a big Jesus fan, you are, Mm -hmm. you also teach about the Aramaic version of the Lord's Prayer, which is what we're going to talk about today. Aramaic was the language in Jesus' day. It was his language, correct? This is for 600 years or so? Was this the language of the land? Yes. Okay. his language, language of his people, mm-hmm. uh, throughout the Middle East yes. as well. For yeah, good six hundred years before he incarnated. Okay, so tell me why you're passionate about teaching people the meaning behind this version of the Lord's Prayer, you know, versus the one that many Christians know mm-hmm. and celebrate and repeat. Well, the one we all grew up with, the Our Father. Um, it's not like there's anything wrong with it or mm-hmm. it's bad. It's just limited. The English version is very limited in what it can offer us. Uh, the Aramaic uh, goes much deeper. It's a very rich language. It's experiential. It'll get you to places like uh, energy and vibration. Mm-hmm. Uh, you mean Jesus was talking about energy and vibration over 2,000 years ago? He was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um how did you figure that one out? Uh, well, just going through the uh, studying what the words meant in Aramaic. Mm-hmm. Um, I said Aramaic is a rich, is a rich language. Um, words have many different meanings mm-hmm. all at the same time. See, that's to me a very important sentence right there. Words have many different meanings. Mm-hmm. And we translate into a meaning. So there are several words, and we're going to go through it line by line, which is which is fascinating and amazing. But people hang on to their interpretation of a translation and then make it fit the box that they want for it to create the rules and the fear, right, that serve them. Yeah. Okay. And this really pulls you out of your box. Mm -hmm. and puts This Aramaic version. Aramaic, Mm -hmm. yeah, Mm -hmm. and puts you in in different places that English uh, does not. And I think it really gets at the depth of what Jesus is trying to teach um, in terms of our own uh, self empowerment, self realization, right? Of who we are, really in God, uh-huh. and who God is in us, and, and living from that place. Um, so it's really um, we associate the prayer, I think, with Christianity, mm-hmm. of course. Um, but what he's teaching there, it, you very quickly see that he's talking about something that's beyond religion. Um, beyond what what became uh, Christianity, uh, which I don't believe he intended to start Mm -hmm. at all. Um, He was just trying to... uh, He didn't want to start his own church. He was a man who was a practicing Jew who was upset with the... Was it the rabbis, the priests, mm -hmm. the Jewish... What's the correct word? Help me out here, Tim. He was... The people who were leading the religion at the time, he felt weren't doing the best job of including all it was it was getting ego there was too much selfishness i remember one story of um he he discovered that somebody had indoor plumbing and that was just unheard of like the the lavishness right the lavish lifestyle versus healing everyone on you know that you encounter treating others the way you'd like to be treated and spreading the love right yeah it was a system basically set up to benefit those on at the top Mm -hmm. and to keep everybody else small Mm mm-hmm and, and he it, was against this. So for now, as as our world, you know, there's a, a story bubbling here with Harvest Church in the Chicago area, a mega mm-hmm. church, and I'm a founder, you know, being you know, having to leave because of wrong misappropriation of funds and all sorts of other scandalous things, layers of people abusing their power. Mm-hmm. Jesus was against abuse of power, which is why he broke away from his Jewish, you know, practice. Right. And then people created the name Christianity because of his practice. But he didn't want to have a religion called Christianity. You don't think? I don't believe so. I, yeah. Um, he was trying to set people free uh, mm-hmm. from oppressive systems, both uh, religion, mm-hmm. uh, within the culture. Um, there was a lot of cultural norms that bothered him. Mm-hmm. 
that were keeping people down, particularly women. Um, so he wanted to raise everybody up so they could understand who and what they really were and, and live from that place. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's trying to set them free. And these are really universal spiritual truths that he's talking about. Um, so anyone who's listening who may or may not be Christian, it doesn't matter um, what he's talking about is for everyone. Mm-hmm. These are universal truths for anyone and everyone. Exactly. Yeah, we're all the same. Mm-hmm. And uh, I believe he's also saying, I'm no different than you. I'm not any more divine than you are. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're all the same. Um, I have just grown to the point where I am aware of my oneness with God, and I'm living from that place more and more. And I want you to live from that place, too, mm-hmm. um, so that you can uh, reach your potential. Right. Yep. And it's unkinking the hose, right? It's getting reconnected to source. So yep. anytime you're praying for, right, you want this, you want that, here you go, now take the, the ball and run down the field, God, thanks for listening. Mm-hmm. It's not about that. It's about remembering that you are always connected to source. Right. But the worry in the head and the thoughts disconnect us from that source. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, it's a it's a completely different understanding of prayer uh, for Jesus. Um, nor- normally, when we think of prayer, we think of uh, us talking to God mm-hmm. and asking for things. But if you think about that, what we're normally praying from is a place of fear. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, heal this, and fix this, do that. Um, it's very much fear-based. There's certainly some love in there when we pray for someone else. Mm-hmm. Um, but if we're always praying for something, we're going to never leave our place of fear. Right. And Jesus is saying, I want you to know a better place to live from, that you can know your oneness with God, that you can pray from a place of love and trust in the goodness of God. And to, for him, it was really an alignment, an alignment, an attunement. Attunement of energy, Attunement yeah. of energy mm-hmm. back into your natural uh, harmony with God. Right. Um, and when you, when you live there, when you're in the flow, as mm-hmm. I like to say, mm-hmm. um, you're just in the flow of, <clears throat> of all the goodness that God is trying to bring into your life. Um he said a very important thing um, in the Sermon on the Mount when he's talking about worrying. Yeah. You know, he's going through all the things people worry about. Will I have enough of this? Will I have enough of that? And he's saying, seek first the kingdom, and all these things you worry about will naturally take care of themselves. And that's what he wanted us to know, this kingdom within. Mm-hmm. Um, and to live from that place of love and trust. Uh, you don't have to live and pray from a place of fear mm-hmm. all the time because God is good. Well, see, people would have trouble with that sentence, God is good, for those who are suffering, because mm-hmm. how could suffering be good? Yeah. And so for those who are suffering, who are listening to this and thinking, you know, I pray and I do this and I do this and I do this and I still lost my job, I lost my family, I lost whatever it is that they lost mm-hmm. that makes them feel lost. Mm-hmm. How can they remember the attunement of energy that is God. Well, your connection with God, your connection with Source has never been lost. It's always been there, regardless of what's happening to you. Mm-hmm. Um, your experience that you're going through currently is all about bringing you back um, to Source and understanding that through this experience, God is actually leading you to your highest good. And that's really hard to hear. Um, yes, because some people would say, my highest good is to suffer? How no. is this my highest good? <laughs> your highest good is to uh, to elevate right. yourself through the experience. And, uh, and sometimes that experience is challenging. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's oftentimes the challenging ones that get our attention the most. But um, if we raise our vibration, if we understand our natural connection with God um, and listen for that in and through the suffering, uh, we will come out in a higher place than we would have if we would have never experienced what we've 
what we're experiencing. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, then let's start from the top mm-hmm. as we go through, you know, the one I know, of course, our Father who art in heaven, now would be thy name, the Aramaic. But you go ahead. You start it off. Yeah. Um, should I just say that the prayer in Aramaic first? And yeah, the, please. And then the Absolutely. Uh, English? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Well, this this is the Aramaic. Awundwash maya net kadashmak tete malkutak nekwe tebyan neka kana dosh maya af bahara ablan lakma desun kanan yaumana washpu klan habain wakta hain a kana de hanan shwakan la hayavain. Way la taklan and lunasuna, I la patsan minbisha, me tu de la he malkuto wa haila, watesh bukta la alam almin. Okay, and I would say bless you. So you First of all, that seems a lot shorter than ours. <laughs> it, it is a little bit, yeah. Because when I was eleven, trying to memorize it, it seemed to take a year. <laughs> so, I like I like to say that uh, because. I think it's just a reminder to us that Jesus uh, was not uh, an American, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and not a blonde-eyed, uh, not blonde-haired, a, blue-eyed uh, yeah. spirit. Yeah, mm-hmm. and we can very easily um, legitimize our politics with him. Actually, kind of think he was a rep- Republican, or he was a Democrat, right? Uh, or he was white, or he was an American. He's a, he, none of that, right? He's, coming and living from a whole different place. Right. Um, so the uh, the language reminds us of that. Yes. And here's the English translation. Now this is just an English translation. Um, There's there, a lot of them. There are many because words have so many meanings. But what I've done is, is put together uh, the work of Aramaic scholars like uh, Neil Douglas Klotz and the and the uh, prayers of what are called the Desert Church uh, Fathers and Mothers of the 4th Century mm-hmm. uh, and uh, some other people and with a little twist of my own. And so putting all that together, this is what the English translation of the Aramaic Lord's Prayer is. O birther, father and mother of the universe, you birth all things in unity. Your one light, one breath, one vibration within all you've given life. Our small identity unravels in you. You give it back as a lesson. Mm -hmm. One with your love, we observe and let go the clutter of our conditioned minds and beliefs that cause our suffering. We let let go the lower vibrations of fear and separation by focusing on your higher vibrations of love and oneness in thought, word, or deed. Your light within welcomes us home to our natural state, and we remember. We find your love in ours and in our heart's desire to bring unity, love, and compassion to the world around us. Here we are your harmony on earth that is in your universe and our love only grows, our light only shines brighter, and our oneness more revealed. Grow through us this moment's bread and counsel, knowing it is only in peace we can receive your knowledge and wisdom. We show our understanding of oneness by forgiveness, which unties the knots of failure binding us as we release the strands we hold of others' faults and we realize our original oneness. Do not let the surface things of this life take us away from our purpose, but keep us present to help needed now. From you arises every peaceful intuition and all power to do. May this inner truth we fiercely protect be the earth from which all our actions grow. So that seems longer (laughs) than the Aramaic version. It is. It it could be a lot longer than that. Yes, right. Um, I'm just giving us some sense of the Mm -hmm. 
the uh, many different meanings of, of different words. Mm-hmm. I was just looking for patterns um, in all of the translations, and uh, so that word that's where it brings us in the prayer in the beginning. Um, you know, I think Jesus saw a world of we're living in a world of such separation here, mm-hmm. and our souls chose that. It came here to live a feeling of separation. It's an illusion, but we feel separated here from God. We feel separated from each other. Mm-hmm. We feel separated from even uh, nature at times. Um, but He's quickly calling us back to our oneness, to our natural oneness in this world of separation, and that was the goal of His teachings. Mm-hmm. And it's really the arc of the universe. Um, all things are working towards that oneness uh, with with God, with everything. Right. Um, so we come here with all our attachments um, to our earthly labels and that our souls have put on here to be human. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just look at what that's doing to us in our politics um, of uh, liberal, conservative, uh, country, mm-hmm. color, race, religion, no religion, economic status. We've got all these, all these separations, right? Uh, which are not bad. They're good. They define our soul's experience here as a human. Uh, but it's actually through those feelings of separation that we learn greater oneness. It's ironic. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've learned a sense of oneness through people much different than I am with their labels. But I, I came to know a greater connection with them because of that. Isn't it interesting, too, that the universal truths and themes of need and want that were prevalent then are still prevalent now we just have smartphones to make them more magnified (laughs) and and technology to make everything more immediate but still people were grappling you know show me help me guide me you know feed me fund me all of it sure and and the other thing too that i want everybody who's listening this to this to understand and this is really important when i'm reporting on a story right whether it's with the Chicago Sun-Times or on the radio or whatever, I have to have my facts and my sources. Mm -hmm. And my quotes have to be from a source that said, blah, right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're not a credible journalist. Mm -hmm. You're just making it up. I mean, everyone's talking about fake news, right? Mm -hmm. The Bible was not compiled by any witness who actually interviewed Jesus and then dictated the words immediately after they were said. (laughs) <laughs> okay. Could you imagine if I went to my editor, Chris Fusco, at the Chicago Sun-Times and said, Hey, I heard a story that a guy told me that his great-great-grandfather said, blah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can we print it? Front page? <laughs> like, you'd be like, are you kidding me? Get out of here. Yeah. But yet, here we are with a book that people claim to be the word of God, right? Mm-hmm. The word of the Lord. But no witnesses to Jesus put it to print. Mm-hmm. It was chiseled under rocks and told for generations. And how many years, Pastor Tim? Decades after. Decades after. Yeah. But but these universal truths were told through stories mm-hmm. and Aramaic and then translated into other languages. And there is a definite belief by all theologians and historians that there are some universal truths, right? Yes. So that there must be some validity to it through history because of so many witnesses yet generations later, mm-hmm. right? So I'm not discounting that this happened or that Jesus existed and that, you know, miracles took place. I'm not discounting that. But what I want everyone to just wrap their head around is if this happened today, it would not be possible to say, hey, I just believe it because so-and-so's so-and-so's great-great-grandmother told me. Mm-hmm. We would need more proof. Yeah. And here we are now fighting and killing over what we think to be true when nobody was a witness to put it down on paper. Because paper didn't exist Right. Paper didn't exist. Digital recorders didn't re- exist. Typewriters didn't exist. Phones mm-hmm. didn't exist. It was all word of mouth and yeah. then chiseled onto templates. Yeah, and that's one of the things that attracts me to the Aramaic because there's no a personal opinion here or interpretation. It's just the the language is the language. It's right. the original language. 
that he spoke in, and uh, this is what it interprets mm -hmm. to. Um, so it's really just receiving what is, and I think with something like the Lord's Prayer, which is really the essence of his teachings. Uh, people don't understand what they have in the Lord's Prayer. Yeah. Um, in Luke 11, uh, the disciples say, uh, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples to pray. What they're referring to there is a custom, a tradition in his time that at some point in a rabbi's career or teacher's career, they would summarize the essence of their teachings in a prayer. Mm. And they're saying John did it for his disciples. When are you going to do it for us? So this is what he's giving us, is the essence of his teachings, what was most important to him, what he wanted people to know above anything else. Mm -hmm. And uh, going to the original language in which he spoke, there's no better <laughs> where to go. No, yeah. Yeah. So what, what he's um, pointing us to, to here early on is oneness, mm -hmm. which... Uh, is underestimated in the Christian church, I believe, in terms of how important that was to him. Um, in John 17, when he's coming to the end of his life, he's praying to the Father, and he says, uh, I pray that they may be one as you and I are one. Mm -hmm. That was his primary goal, that people would know their inherent natural oneness. Right. with source, with Father, with God, whatever word you want to use, and live from that place. So when Jesus says, only through me, well, that's that's what the New Testament and Christians and, and people who believe Jesus is the only way to God will hang on, mm -hmm. right? What do you say to that, to when they say that there are parts of the Bible that say, only through me can you get to the, well, in the, the Lord? Yeah. In the Aramaic, it's very clear that he's not talking about himself. He's talking about God. Mm -hmm. He says, what I've taught you is the way to God, is the way to know God, that this is what God is like. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and what Christianity did very, very early on is make it all about Jesus when he wasn't about himself. Right. He was about the Father. Right. That's what he came for, to... Uh, to up, be a revolutionary, to upset the structures, the oppressive religious and cultural structures, and say, um, no, you are who you are in God. That's, all, that's natural. That's inherent for all of us. I want you to know that and to live your life from within, from that place within. Right. Um, he never made it about himself. He didn't want it to be about himself. He never said he was the Son of God. He never said... Um, he didn't? No. Not in the New Testament? No. Okay. Um, no. Um, at one point, um, Pilate asked him, are you the Son of God? And he says, well, you say so. Right. <laughs> right. So people um, have twisted that into yeah. like, ooh, I'm being coy. I'm just being shy. <laughs> But, yeah, <laughs> but his understanding of the Son of God is that um, yes, mm -hmm. He is, but so are you. Right. We are all the you children are of God. A daughter of God, if you want to use the children of God language. I'm not the Son of God. I am a Son of God. I'm showing you that you are too. Right. And I want you to know that and, and love that about yourself, mm -hmm. and to live from that place. Yeah. Let's talk about clutter. That's an interesting. We yeah. observe and let go yeah. the clutter of our conditioned minds and belief. <laughs> we got a lot of clutter. We do, but I didn't know Aramaic knew about clutter. <laughs> it, Marie Kondo hadn't been invented yet, yeah. where she's tidying up everyone's house. So, uh, yeah. what word in Aramaic was was attached to clutter? If you remember, well, it's it's um, the word that we get hallowed out of. Oh, okay. It means to kind of to hollow out, mm -hmm. uh, to separate, to set apart, yeah. to sweep away. It literally means to sweep away the clutter. Got it. Uh, when you would uh, net cottage your, your space, mm -hmm. you would 
be sweeping away clutter. Mm-hmm. And we have an incredible amount of clutter in our minds that are really running our lives and we don't realize it. Um, neuroscientists, um, I'm reading, can now tell us that we have between 50 and 60,000 thoughts a day. Right. Um, and 80% of them are negative in one way or another. 80%. Mm-hmm. Um, when I watch myself, I've noticed my negativity tends to be more towards something not going the way I think it should. Yeah. Or someone else is not acting the way I think they should or they're not doing things the way I think they should. Mm-hmm. So 80% negative. The other 90 to 95% of them are repetitive. We keep repeating the same, churning the same stuff over and over and over and over in our minds. Mm-hmm. They're self-referential. Mm-hmm. They're about this little me that we've created, and they're involuntary. They just pop up. Right. So I find it very uh, illuminating to just sit back and observe my mind, and just to see what's going on there. And it's uh, it's a <laughs> mine's a hot mess, Tim. I don't know about you. I was trying to relax earlier today for an hour, yeah. and with a meditation on my inner monologue was still going oh yeah you know it was like wow 15 minutes in and i'm thinking when is this clutter chatter gonna turn off doesn't it no it's time to stop it's very hard yeah Yeah. most of us find it very difficult Mm -hmm. um but um and then plus we've got all this uh conditioning Mm -hmm. we grew up in family systems where we were told what to think what to believe Mm. um Maybe given negative messages about ourselves in comparison to another sibling, or we never measured up to mom or dad's expectation. We're afraid of disappointing them. Yeah. Um, the conditioning of the culture. Uh, and think, I'm thinking particularly of women in how they're told where their value is. Mm-hmm. I've been, I was reading the other day about increased anxiety amongst. Um, teenagers now, uh, particularly among uh, girls Mm -hmm. who feel this extra pressure to perform, to accomplish, to prove themselves, and all the while knowing that they're really going to be judged by how they look. Because of the filters on Instagram and everything else. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's all that conditioning, and the biggest conditioning is religion. Yeah. Um, and the church, as as much as I still... Have, I know you're a big fan. I love it. Yeah. Um, great. And a lot of people should, because there are yeah. some wonderful churches out there and, and wonderful people helping communities and rising people up. I'm not I, trying to exactly. knock all church. But I, like we were talking earlier, the and corrupt big ma- mega yeah. churches that keep coming out as, as corrupt and, and yep. misusing funds and manipulations it's not okay but in, yeah and in, in my world of lutheranism mm-hmm. um you know we all grew up hearing that we're sinners that, it, that our nature is sinful yeah you guys are pretty rough on the sinners piece i mean yeah. and you said that didn't resonate for you even when you were practicing right that that was hard for you to even get up in front of right. a congregation and say you are all sinners yeah exactly yeah, yeah. Uh, if that's what you hear you are uh, you're in for a rough time. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So we've got um, all this conditioning going on mm-hmm. um, that we need to understand. It's important for us to understand what what's going on in our minds. Observe it. Uh, learn from it. Uh, I think it's very important for us to love ourselves. There the other day, I was working through this prayer. Mm-hmm. And I, I started out uh, father and mother mm-hmm. of the universe. Uh, and uh, I got the mother. And I couldn't go any farther. Why? Because I noticed this profound sadness in me. Mm. That particular morning, I was just extremely sad. I was sad about what's going on in the world. Mm-hmm. And all I could do was be sad. And I just let myself be sad and be with my sadness and feel it, listen to it. 
uh, imagining it as something I could hold Mm -hmm. and just holding it dearly and saying, I understand. Of course you're sad. Um, I'm here for you. And imagine myself just being held in the love of God. And we just sat together for Mm -hmm. a while. Sometimes just being a witness to it yeah. can help it move yeah. through. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And not be afraid of it. Um, if we don't pay attention to what's going on within, it gets has a much bigger hold on us. Mm-hmm. If we give it a little loving attention, uh, it'll move on, generally mm-hmm. speaking. Mm-hmm. Um, so we need to be very kind and self-compassionate uh, to ourselves there when we uh, when we go within and observe what's going on there. And oftentimes I'll see that what I'm struggling with, I'll tell it, you know, I get where you're coming from, but you're really born from fear and blindness. Right. And um, I understand that, but you have no power over me anymore. I let you go. Yeah. Um, And I find oftentimes it will. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I give it some understanding, that that it has a backstory. It does, <laughs> and every action, everyone out there listening should really take a inventory mm-hmm. on your actions. And is it from a place of fear or a place of love? If you're yeah. acting in manipulation mm-hmm. because you're afraid you're not good enough, you're not popular enough, you're not rich enough, mm-hmm. y- y- whatever it might be, you're not first in line. That is fear-based ego thinking and it's not connected to source and that action i always say is like standing in quicksand you might be on top for a minute but then you sink Mm -hmm. and then you have a harder time getting out right so we have to be conscious of that and so when you teach and tim you teach mostly in the midwest i see that Mm -hmm. growing for you uh, based in Minnesota, uh, I know you've done classes uh, at the Center for Intuitive Development, um, Echo mm-hmm. Bodine mm-hmm. Center in Minnesota, and you remind people how to get back to their core. So how do you do that? Yeah. Well, I think first we need to uh, pay attention to what's there first. We get to start where you are. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I don't like the idea of just pouring positive. It's more than positive thinking. Putting a blanket thinking. on and, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. to me, it's like, like putting white snow on the dog on the dog poop of the lawn of your mind. Yes. Um, I love that analogy because it's like, I tell people it's like mowing the weed. You can mm-hmm. just cut it, that's fine, but the root is still the underground, still there, yeah. and it's going to come back. Yeah. So like you say, with the white snow on dog poop, that snow's going to melt, and then we yep. got a big pile of poop. Yep. It might be a little dehydrated, but still it's there. Yeah, so, and, and <laughs> life, life heats up, <laughs> yeah. and the dog poop's still there, so you got to deal with it. Mm-hmm. Um, but once that work is done, and I, I would you know, I suggest visiting those things, but not living there. Yeah. Giving it a bit of attention, but not your utmost attention. And then moving on, you know, I mean, I'm starting to speak now in churches, and I'll, every time I'll say to people, would you please repeat after me, at the core of me is God. Mm-hmm. At the core of me is light. At the core of me is love. And they do that. Yeah. And I'm very intentional about that, because we're not telling each other that. Our churches are not telling people that Mm -hmm. Uh, we constantly need to be reminding ourselves who and what we really are tell ourselves that tell each other you know i see i see the light in you i do and this is how i see it please tell your children from infancy uh, that they are light right and this isn't an entitlement thing. Like, you're the best, kiddo. You no, get no. a trophy for going to school today. No. It's not about that. It's about valuing and reflecting their essence, their source. Right. This is what your rootedness. It's it's beyond you, and it is you all at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a lovely time at Christmas. Um, I was alone with my 15-month-old grandson, Soren. Yeah. And I was working him towards uh, bed. And I was just walking around holding him, and I was making up this silly little song, uh, singing to him that you are light, you are love, 
I am one with you and you are one with me. God is one with you, you are one with God. If we can give our children that message over and over and over and over again, mm -hmm. I think that's the greatest thing we can do as parents, as grandparents, because we all get so beat up in the world and we, we get told what we are and none of those things is what we are. Yeah. Um, and it's hard because, you know, I've got a, a teenager, a pre mm -hmm. just preteen, almost 13 year old, and he says, Mom, I tried, I tried to pray and nothing changed. You know, mm -hmm. it's like we, we have this, we have this assumption that a prayer is supposed to be, like we were saying earlier, you, you put in your order and mm -hmm. you wait for the pizza to get delivered. Yeah. And that's, that's a misconception, too, because prayer should just be about a dialogue with source. Exactly. Yeah, an alignment. Mm -hmm. so you're not trying to create anything that's not already there. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not trying to create this nirvana experience with God. Um, you're just returning to what, what is there already. And even if you can't feel it at the moment, keep reminding yourself. Mm -hmm. I am light at the core of me as God, uh, especially when you aren't conscious of it or aware of it. And it's particularly hard in those teen years, oh my gosh. Mm. Yeah. When really all you can do as a mom, mm -hmm. your dad is just keep reminding them. Right. Uh, they'll hear it. Yeah. They will remember that. Um, next time they're bullied or they aren't picked for the traveling team or... Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that's all we can do is just keep reminding each other. We find your love in ours and in our heart's desire. Yeah, yeah, it's there. Um, God is as close to you as the love within you. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter whether you, what religion you are, whether you even believe in a God or not. Mm -hmm. It's still the truth that your natural instinct towards love is the, the divine in you and your natural desires to uh, be kind your natural desires to think I just want to make a difference in the world everybody says that right I want to be a part of something bigger than me that is the divine in you because your soul intuitively knows that it is part of something bigger than itself <laughs> that it is here to make a difference. Right. That it's come here to live a story. And, uh, yeah. So it's just it's this natural thing within us that we're reconnecting to. Where's harmony? Here, we are your harmony on earth that is in your universe. That's one of the lines. Yeah. We are your harmony. Um, that's what I... Well, the harmony that's in the universe is amazing. I mean, nothing just naturally work together, and in nature, how things naturally work together. And, and what's that line in the traditional Lord's Prayer? Harmony. What do you know? Um, Uphand. I'm just trying to think of like. Thy some, kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Got it. On earth Here, as it is in heaven. We are your harmony on earth that it is in your universe. Yes. Got it. Yeah. So we are literally aligning ourselves with the divine energy within us and it is flowing in the world already rather than fighting it uh, we're becoming aware of it and aligning with it so that it can flow in us and through us out to the world that we're we're acting in harmony with what God is trying to do in the world rather than resisting it mm -hmm. um so we set our intent of attuning ourselves to the higher vibrations of love and oneness with God um, by fiercely monitoring what goes in mm -hmm. to us. And this is really important. We don't pay attention to what we're allowing in. Uh, when I notice something that's coming in that is lowering, going to lower my vibration, I try to cut it off as soon as I possibly can and realize this isn't going to serve me. Well, that's an interesting thought because a lot of people are faced with a lot of negative. Mm -hmm. And then I get torn with, like what you're saying, sometimes you can inspire those that come in with that vibration. 
by being your high vibration, right? Exactly. If you build it, they will come. So mm-hmm. for me, some current challenges and some dynamics, I'm wondering, is this really the space where I should be? Because it doesn't match where I feel my energy is. Mm-hmm. But then where I come to when I meditate is that it can inspire others to raise to that vibration. Exactly. Versus going down back to mm-hmm. the sludge, you can take them out of the sludge. Exactly. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Yeah, and your outer world is really reflecting back to you, your inner state. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say that again. Your outer world is reflecting back to you, your inner state. A lot of the people I've interviewed, not from a church, but from spiritual teachers, have said that. Mm-hmm. If something keeps coming and showing up, it's because it's not healed within. Right. Right. You yeah. keep getting left out for something, and you have abandonment issues. You haven't healed mm-hmm. that part of you that feels abandoned. The inner child work hasn't been done. Whatever your human homework, it's not completed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can literally recreate the world outside of me mm-hmm. by first working on the world within me. Right. Yeah. Um, one of the things I love about when people walk into the, our living space that my wife and I live in, um, we're not perfect by any means, but they talk about how peaceful it feels, mm-hmm. and they just love sitting there. Um, we c- we can create that kind of space by the energy that we're emanating out. Yes, and that energy is coming from the source within. Right. Um, so you can literally recreate the atmosphere around you. Mm. Uh, and intentional yeah. acts of kindness, too. Mm-hmm. You talk about that as the it brings everyone's vibration up. It does. It brings yeah. everybody's vibration up. Um, simple things. I, when I'm out, you know, my congregation, I don't have a congregation anymore, but my, my congregation is the world right now. Mm-hmm. So I go out in the day, and if I'm at Target or wherever I'm at, that's my congregation. Yeah. And just a simple thing, like a look of kindness in the eye to mm-hmm. someone. Mm-hmm. Uh, a thank you, right? A patience <laughs> to uh, to someone. They just amazed that. Thank you for being so patient with yeah. me. Mm-hmm. Um, simple things like that uh, changes them. Yeah. Um, so I, I always view any relationship we have with another human as an energy exchange. Mm-hmm. Right. That's really what they are, because we're nothing but we're all energy. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, and you, you know when you're around the energy of someone else, what it is. Right, <laughs> true. Everybody knows that. Let's go to give us this day our daily bread. Yeah. That one goes to grow through us this moment's yep. bread and counsel. Yeah, grow through us. Um, so often, this gets into our notion of being co-creators with God. Mm-hmm. Uh, so often we get caught up into this, well, I'm going to pray for something, and then I'm just going to sit back and wait and see if God does what I asked for. Mm-hmm. And that will be an answered prayer. When, in fact, you and I are co-creators with God of the world around us. We are the ones who are the answer to people's hunger, mm-hmm. both for bread or anything else they need in the physical plane or spiritually. Mm-hmm. Um, also in Aramaic, the word bread means counsel, which paints a picture of someone going to someone for counsel, for wisdom. Yeah, our daily bread people think is money or food, but in Aramaic it's counsel, which is yeah. wisdom. Yeah, which is the greatest bread of all. Right. And I think today I watch people and I notice how obsessed so many of us are with our opinions mm. about everything. And we just have to get our opinions out there. And we're so convinced we're right. And, it, <laughs> and it's so important for us to be right. right. And let me show you why I'm right and you're wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, once we're there, we're completely shut down. We can't take in anything new. So this is, this is the becoming like a child that Jesus also taught. Um, when I began my new spiritual journey seven years ago I started every day by saying I know nothing mm-hmm. absolutely nothing uh, God I want to know your thoughts I'm tired of mine Yeah. help me think your thoughts help me see this the way you see them um, so it's this person who is open who is humble 
who wants to see the bigger picture. Um, that's what this is pointing to, and it's so important in our world today. Uh, can you imagine how different we would be living together, how different mm -hmm. our politics would be? Mm -hmm. um, if we understood that the people were trying to figure these political issues out with, we understood that the same divine energy, the same light, uh, is within them that is in me. Mm -hmm. We could at least have a respectful conversation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, what's that? There's no ratings in respectful conversation. Yeah. yeah. And realize that I don't know everything. Right. Uh, someone else brings something to the table. Mm -hmm. We all do. Right. Uh, we'd be asking all different kinds of questions. Um, we would actually be seeking mutual action uh, answers for the for the common good. You know, people underestimate the power of content, just being mm -hmm. content. And it's all about drama and being right. Yep. In this day yeah, and age, yep. is that's what we value and hang hats on. But the power of peace and mm -hmm. contentment is is where we need to get back to. Exactly. Yeah, all our our our. Yeah, getting back to politics, um, it's so all fear-based. Right. It's coming from a place of fear. I'm afraid. So I've decided what the right way out of this fear is. And well, there, you know, sometimes, though, I do feel we have to protect, right, and, and put up boundaries. Because not everything is kumbaya, right? We can't hold everybody's hand. If, if you lived in New York, you would need a deadbolt on your door so someone doesn't come in. You know, there's some... Mm -hmm. So this is where I get... A little caught up, Tim, in in the content and peace side, where mm -hmm. we know source is, and then in our reality, where we want to protect ourselves from harm. How can sure. we bring source in to protect ourselves from harm without being judgmental and jumping to negative conclusions? Right. You know, that's a tough dance. It is a tough dance. Um, um, yeah, of course, the ultimate question always is, is this of love? Right. Is what this person is saying to me, is it coming from a place of love? Right. Is it bringing me to a place of love? Um, yeah. Right. So I... Well, what's a trespass? Let's, <laughs> let's translate trespass. That, that one's been, give it, uh, you yeah. know, we, our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who uh -huh. trespass against us. The Aramaic, uh, as I said, um, talks about untying the knots mm -hmm. of failure binding us. We're talking about energy here. And when you and I can't forgive someone mm -hmm. or ourselves, right. that's a judgment. Correct. And what that does is it blocks the flow of the energy of love. And we cannot see our inherent oneness with each other. And it also points to another understanding of what forgiveness is. We've been led to believe that forgiveness is someone's, a separate person outside of me has done something to me. And now me, which I haven't done. Right. And then me, in this higher moral ground that I'm standing on, looks down upon you and I give you a break and I bestow upon you forgiveness. Mm -hmm. When in fact, What's happened is that the reason that bothers you mm -hmm. is that that person is showing something you, to you about yourself that you have not loved, that you have not embraced, that you have not forgiven within yourself. That's why it's bothering you so much. If you were at peace within yourself, instead of it bothering you, you would look upon them with compassion and say, oh, that person right now is acting out of blindness, mm -hmm. out of fear, out of ignorance. They've lost their way. Um, but because we're so caught up in our own fear mm -hmm. that um, we take it personally. <laughs> Completely. Yeah. And like we were talking about, John St. Augustine, a great author and friend and uh, radio host, had talked to me about the unkinking of the hose. And that's mm -hmm. 
literally when when the hose is kinked and you turn on the faucet and this little trickle comes out you're like what the heck and then when you unkink that hose boom it comes mm-hmm. flying out and that's what you're saying here with a knot yep. it's a block of source energy yeah. and we know that feeling of that knot yes. in us when we can't let go of something we can't forgive mm-hmm. um, it literally is a knot or a strand of energy that needs to be unkinked that's a great way to look at it mm-hmm. And you were talking earlier about Jesus, my autobiography, which is a channeling of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Is this, that Tina Louise Spaulding who did that? Yeah. And you you love that book. I love that book. I strongly encourage anyone to read it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a channeling of Jesus uh, through her. And what I loved about it was, was how it was resonating with me from the get-go in terms of, of truth. And uh, she brought or he brought through her, brought me back to this new understanding of forgiveness. This understanding of forgiveness, I became to intuitively know years ago in meditation that, oh, my forgiving someone is not about me. It's about, it's, it's about, it's not about them, it's, it's about, about me. Yeah. And uh, what I haven't dealt with inside myself. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, I'd really encourage you to uh, pick that anyone up. Anyone to take a look. Mm-hmm. Um, Keep yeah. us present to help needed now. Yeah, when you do the work of this Aramaic prayer, um, you start to get freer. You're more free from your fearful little self that you're so obsessed with. Mm-hmm. And when you get freer from that, you are more able to be present to what is beyond you, what's happening in fr- right in front of your face, the need in front of you. And that's what that talks about. Um, is that for, um, we, as we forgive those who trespass against us, is that what that one is equating to? Is that in the same verse? Um, yeah. Okay. And lead us not into temptation. That's a yep. big one right there. Lead us not into temptation, um, which is a poor translation in the English Mm-hmm. Um, the Aramaic is let us not enter into something that's going to be harmful for us instead of trying to talk God into not leading us because God doesn't do that. <laughs> let us not enter. Let us not help us to not go there. Mm-hmm. That thing that's destructive for us right. to do. But um, yeah, keep us present to help needed now. So we're coming out of this prison of this little me. Mm-hmm. Uh, where we don't have to live. At all times, I'm one with this loving, abundant source, one with everyone and everything. So what what is there to worry about? Why can I, how can I not be present? Everything is taken care of. Mm -hmm. This is what we lose sight of here. Mm -hmm. We're being watched over constantly. There are forces working for us for our highest good at all times. Mm -hmm. Um... So, yeah, being present, uh, all spiritual teachers talk about that. And from you arises every peaceful intuition. Intuition in Aramaic. Where does that one come from, intuition? Well, uh, I mentioned the name Neil Douglas Klotz. He's Mm -hmm. an Aramaic scholar, but his translation reads, um, from you arises all power to do. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Every vision, every song, uh, just knowing what we've come here to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, I put the word intuition in myself because I think it's just something we can identify with. It's a current day word. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That inner knowing um, of what to do, where to go, what not to do, and peaceful. Um, you know, we have a mutual friend, Echo Bodine, and she often teaches that. If the intuition, the feeling is peaceful, if it's come quickly, more as a point of information, there's not a lot of emotion to it. It's just a point of fact as, as information. Yep. And if it's got a clarity to it, mm-hmm. uh, you can trust it. If it's confusing, there's some um, emotion to it, you're not quite sure, you're uneasy about it in any way. Uh, don't go with it. Yeah. Um, 
But God will only give you what is peaceful. You'll know it's of God when it's peaceful. You know it's for your highest good. And yeah. go where you're wanted, people. I was just yeah. telling Tim this in the lobby. You know, if you're banging on a door and it's not cracking open, that's not your door. Yeah, exactly. Another, you know, when God closes the door, he opens a window. Well, another opportunity is coming. Your best interests are in God's exactly. best interests. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, I'm. it makes me sad that the church uh, doesn't talk about that much at all. Yeah. I said almost ever. <laughs> well, because the entire Bible was trusting your intuition and going with hunches and guts and trusting yeah. messages that are coming and, uh, you know, you're turning left, you're going here, you're meeting this person, you're you're following downloads. Right. Direct downloads. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When I was a kid, I, I thought, why doesn't God talk to us now like he did back then? Because apparently he was just yelling to people. To- <laughs> He <laughs> <It> was just <laughs> a very yeah. clear connection back yeah, then. This audible, mm-hmm. loud, uh, Abraham, go to the land I'll show you. Oh, okay. All right, I'm on it. Uh, that may very well have been that intuition that, um, <laughs> and people talk about hearing a voice, but in the, in the audible voice, mm-hmm. um, that's true. Right. Um, but it's more that uh, still small voice that the Bible talks right. about. Right. Um, and the whole idea of where Jesus is leading us to is coming back in tune with this inner place, this inner truth that he lived from and he wanted us to know it so that everything we say, everything we think, everything we do, how we respond to things happening around us all comes from that place. That we live our lives, as other teachers say, you know, from the inside out. Sure. Rather than uh, responding to the outside all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's where he wanted us to live from. And he's telling us, you have it just like I have it. And uh, I want you to know it and live from there. So that's really my message these days, is to remind people who and what they are. And to live from that place within themselves. How is it being received within the church community? Really well. Good. Yeah, I'm really, I'm not, yeah, I'm not surprised. I started talking about these things the last six, seven years that I was a pastor. Uh, most people were very receptive to it. Mm-hmm. It's a switch uh, because they've spent their whole lives hearing things that we should, we should believe this or that about. Jesus or right. about God. Right. And if you believe the right things about Jesus or about God, then you'll go to heaven when you die. That was that was the whole right. thing. This is more of uh, understanding your own inherent union, oneness with God and living from that place. And Jesus is trying to help you get there. Mm-hmm. Um, which is beyond religion, which is another reason why I don't think he had intended to create another religion, because that's even more separation. Correct. Um, We're getting into that head stuff, and you know, what I believe is better than what you believe, and um, beliefs are powerful, but they must come from your your truth. Yeah. And evil is real. I believe it, but mm-hmm. I don't like to focus on it because I, don't, I think like begets like. Right. So if you're, you know, if you're focusing on the negative, you're always going to see it. Everyone right. out there, you know it. When you decide you're going to go buy a Subaru, all you see are Subarus. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's where your mind is subconsciously going. You don't even know it, and it's manifesting right in front of you. Right? Exactly. You think, oh, I keep seeing two, two, two. Well, you'll keep seeing two, two, two because your mind yeah. is focusing on that. So we have to really play this game of. <sighs> It's hard to train your brain, mm-hmm. but it's possible. Yeah. And we can do it. And it starts with an awareness, like you say, observation. Observe yeah. where you are. Honor where you are. And and like you said also, Tim, work on it. Like, like witness. Be a witness to the pain. You mm-hmm. woke up one day and you were sad, then sit with it. Yeah. Honor that sadness. Exactly. And yeah. that, that will help you get through it. Otherwise, if you keep pushing it aside, it'll come back yep. like a bad dream. Yep. It's all 
it all has meaning, it all has purpose, nothing's wasted. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all there for you as teacher, everything. Yeah. Um, You're going to post this prayer on Facebook. Tim Tangblad is spelled T-E-N-G-B-L-A-D. Mm -hmm. And Tim is just T-I-M, no T-Y-M or T-I-M-M -M or anything funky. Jennifer with two F's over here, so I have to clarify that because okay. everyone's got an I and a heart over the I or something. But I encourage you, anyone out there listening, to reach out to Tim. Ask him to come and speak to your church. Ask him to come to your community. And continue to spread the message of oneness and unkink your hose. Get the knots out so that source can come and flow through you. You know, I tell a lot of the healers that I interview, this is coming through you, not from you. Right. And when you really open up to what can come through you, mm -hmm. it's a miracle what can come from that. Look yeah. at musicians. They get these downloads and then beautiful music comes out. Mm -hmm. We are all capable of making our own beautiful music mm -hmm. from whatever symphony we want to compose. Yeah. And whether that's computer programming or actual symphonies, yeah. we're all unique and we're needed. Exactly. We're here to sing a song yeah. that only we're here to sing. Okay. Um, so I'm trying to help people find their voice. And yeah, I would love to come and, and speak to your group, whatever it is. Um, that's what I'm here for now in this next chapter of my life. I know it's what I'm supposed to do. Well, you've been listening pretty well. <laughs> and the megaphone is being played in your ears. So yeah. thank you for being open to the channel, Tim. Thank you. Thanks for everything that you do. And to anyone out there, find Tim on Facebook. I'm at jenweigel.com, J-E-N-W-E-I-G-E-L.com. I encourage all of you to treat others the way you'd like to be treated. Keep expanding your mind, unkink your hose, and stay spiritual, damn it. <laughs>